Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're diving into an exciting topic. Processing XML requests and responses in Spring Boot APIs. In our fast-paced world of RESTful services, JSON often takes the spotlight, but XML remains a powerful and widely used format, especially in legacy systems and certain industries. Understanding how to handle XML in your Spring Boot applications can open up new possibilities and enhance your API's versatility. In this session, we'll cover everything from setting up your project to accept XML, to crafting controllers that can seamlessly process XML data, and finally, ensuring your responses are formatted correctly in XML. Whether you're dealing with legacy systems or building integrations, this is a crucial skill to have. Up until now, all the APIs we've built have been handling requests and responses in JSON format. JSON is great for its simplicity and readability, but today we're going to expand our horizons and dive into the world of XML. Ready to add a new skill to your toolkit? Let's get started. Let's open the Maven repository in your browser. This is where we'll find the dependencies we need to add XML support to our Spring Boot project. Now, in the Maven repository search bar, type in Jackson Data Format XML. Now, click on the Jackson Data Format XML result from the search. Now, copy the dependency snippet provided. Next, let's open the palm.xml file in our Spring Boot project and paste the copy dependency snippet. This will integrate the Jackson Data Format XML library into our project, enabling us to handle XML data seamlessly. Now that we've added the dependency, let's reload Maven to ensure our project picks up the new changes. Let's take our Get Employee by ID API to the next level by adding XML support. As you can see on the screen, the Produces attribute currently specifies application slash JSON, which means our API only supports JSON format for now. But here's the exciting part. The Produces attribute can take an array of strings, allowing our API to support multiple formats. This means we can make our API capable of responding with both JSON and XML. To do this, we simply need to add application slash XML to the produces attribute. By doing this, our API will be able to return responses in XML format as well, making it more versatile and powerful. Update the produces attribute in the at get mapping annotation to include both application slash JSON and application slash XML. Now, let's make a small but important change to the objects we handle in our requests and responses. For the Get Employee by ID API, we're not taking any request body. We're only returning an employee object in the response. To ensure our employee class can properly handle XML responses, we need to add the at Jackson XML root element annotation at the class level. This annotation helps in serializing and deserializing the employee object to and from XML format. Start the application. The application is up and running. Now, let's switch over to Postman. All right, as you can see on the screen, we've got our get employee by ID request ready in Postman, set to fetch details for employee ID one. But before we hit send, let's click on the headers tab. Take a look at the headers section. You'll see an accept key with the value set to application slash JSON. This tells our API that we want the response in JSON format. Let's hit send and watch our API return the response in JSON. Look at the response. We got the JSON response we were expecting. The employee's name is Ram, he's 22 years old, and he works in the developer department. Everything is looking great so far. All right, let's head back to the header section. This time, we want our response in XML format. 
To make this happen, we need to inform the server that we're expecting an XML response. So, let's change the value of the accept header from application slash JSON to application slash XML. Ready to see our data in a whole new format? Let's update that header and hit send. Take a look at the response. We receive the employee details wrapped in an XML root element employee. The employee's name is Ram, he's 22 years old, and he works in the developer department. Our API is now successfully handling XML responses. Awesome work. As you can see in the response, all our tags start with lowercase letters except for the root element. But don't worry, we can customize this too. Let's open the employee class and make the necessary adjustments to get consistent tag names. In the at Jackson XML root element annotation, we can customize the root element name by setting the local name attribute. Let's specify the value as employee in all lowercase letters to keep it consistent. Now that we've made the necessary changes, let's start the application and see our updated XML response in action. The application is up and running. Now, let's switch over to Postman. Now, let's hit the Get Employee by ID API again. Look at the response. This time, we see the root element in all lowercase letters as employee. Everything is consistent now, just as we wanted. Our customization worked perfectly, and the API is handling XML responses exactly as expected. Now, let's talk about adding XML support to our add employee method, which takes data in the request body. To do this, we'll need to update the consumes attribute of the at post mapping annotation to include application slash XML. As you can see, the consumes attribute can take an array of strings. This means we can support both application slash JSON and application slash XML formats simultaneously, just like we did with the produces attribute for responses. In addition, we need to add the at Jackson XML root element annotation to our employee class at the top level. This will ensure that the employee object can be properly deserialized from XML format. Now, try it yourself and see how easy it is to enable XML support for your Spring Boot APIs. Let's wrap things up. Today, we've successfully added XML support to both request and response handling in our Spring Boot APIs. We learned how to update the produces and consumes attributes to support multiple formats, and we added the necessary annotations to our classes to ensure proper serialization and deserialization. Thank you so much for joining me in this session. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Stay tuned for more exciting content. See you next time.